What's going on guys, John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to build a simple currency conversion tool with Kinter and Python. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to create this currency conversion tool. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership at all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. All right, it is Kinter Tuesday once again, and we're going to build this simple currency conversion tool. Now, this is a very basic tool, but you can see we can put in our, we want US dollars, Mexican pesos, we want to convert it, we click the button, maybe we want to put more, uh, boom, there we go, we can clear the screen, we can say uh, we've got 5321. What is that? 110,304. And you can see it's nicely formatted. We've got a dollar sign here. We've got commas. We've got decimal places. We're going to do all the things, but we are not going to make this a smart app. So you're going to have to enter in your currency conversion rate. And I'm going to show you how to get that real quick. You could use an API to do that. And I challenge you to do that after you watch this video. But for this video, we're just going to build out the structure of this thing without connecting to an API to get the most current data. We're just going to run over to Google and grab it really quick. Uh, to make this work. So I've got a file called currency.py. It's our basic Kinter starter code that we always have I'm using the sublime text editor in the git bash terminal as always. And you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the Kinter playlist with almost 200 other Kinter videos and growing. So check that out if you haven't seen it so far. So, okay. So right off the bat, I want to use, uh, let's see, hold on, let me, I've got this locked here and I'll talk about that in a second. I want to use these tabs. So let's build this out first. Now these are our notebooks, Kinter calls tabs notebooks, right? So we have to build that, right? So we have to import that from TTK. So we want to go from tkinter import TTK. And while we're at it, let's go from a tkinter import message box. I wanna have a little message box pop up if we don't enter all the things. So for instance, if we don't fill out this form and try and click next, we get a little box that says, hey, you forgot to fill out a field. So uh, we're gonna use message boxes for that. So let's build out our notebook and I'm gonna call this my underscore notebook. Why not? And this is gonna be a TTK dot notebook. And we wanna put it in root. So then let's go my underscore notebook dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of like five, just to push it down the screen a little bit. Let's comment this, create tabs, call them tabs because they're tabs. Kinter could call them notebooks all they want, but we know they're tabs. So we're just going to call them tabs. And so, okay. So we want two tabs and to create our tabs, we're going to create a frame and then we're going to put the frame in the tab and then go from there. So basically we want two frames. So let's create one called a currency frame. And the other one we'll call a, I don't know, conversion frame. Right. And this is going to be a frame. We want to put it in a my underscore notebook, right? So that's what we called our tabs up here. And I'm going to give this a width of like 480 by a height of like 480, because you'll notice our app is 500 by 500. And I don't want it to go the entire, I want to put a little bit of a border around our, around our tabs. So we'll go 480 by 480. And we could just go ahead and copy this whole guy, paste it in again. So let's go currency underscore frame dot pack. And we want to fill equals both. And we want to expand equals one, because we want this to fill out to the size of the, the screen that we've set up here. So, okay, let me just copy this. And then we can go conversion underscore frame and do the same thing. So now let's add our tabs. So we just go my underscore notebook dot add, and we want to add our currency frame. And for the text here, let's set this to, I don't know, currencies. We're going to pick which currencies we want to do. And same thing here, you just copy and paste. But this time we want the conversion frame. There we go conversion frame. And let's say we want this to say convert. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this and run it, make sure that looks okay. So let's go Python currency dot pi. And when we do, we see we get two tabs, we can click one says currencies, one says convert. Okay, look good so far. So let me pull this up one more time. So in our currencies tab, we want a label frame and then another label frame and a couple of buttons. And the first one will have our home currency what we want to convert from. 
And then the next one will have the conversion currency, what we want to convert to, and then our conversion rate. So let me just bring this over here so we can reference it. And now let's, uh, let's just go currency stuff, right? Because this is going to get quite unruly unless we kind of break this apart. So, okay. So this is our home currency. So let's just call this, I don't know, home. And this is going to be a label frame. We want to put this in our currency frame, right? And we want the text to equal your home currency. And let's home dot pack this guy. And let's give this a pad Y of like 20 to push it down the screen a little bit. So next we want the home currency entry box. So let's call this one home underscore entry. And this is going to be an entry box. We want to put it in home, this label frame we just created, right? And let's get this a font equals. Let's make this big. Let's go Helvetica. We always do and give it a size 24. So the font's nice and big. So we get this nice big box there. All right, so now we can home underscore entry dot pack this guy. And let's give this a pad Y of 10 and a pad X of 10. So there's a little bit of space around it. You see here, we like that space. So pad X and pad Y will do that. Okay, so now let's go conversion currency frame. And we'll call this one conversion. And this is going to be a, again, a label frame. We want to put it in our currency frame again, and we want the text to equal conversion. Let's see currency. It looks like we've got right here. There we go. And let's go conversion dot pack and give this a pad Y also of 20 to push it down the screen a little bit. Okay. So now we want a label, an entry box, a label and an entry box. So let's call this what convert to label. I don't know. Uh, so I'm going to call this conversion underscore label. This is going to be a label. We want to put it in conversion. And we want the text to say currency to convert to dot dot. dot. And let's conversion underscore label dot pack this guy. And let's give this a pad Y of like 10. Let's push it down a little bit. Okay. Now let's put uh convert to entry. So I'm going to call this conversion underscore entry. It's going to be an entry box. We want to put it in conversion. And let's give this a font also of Helvetica. And again, make it big like 24. And then let's conversion entry dot pack and give this a pad Y of, I don't know, let's also go 10 and a pad X of 10, a little space here as well as there. Okay, so then we could just copy these guys, paste them in again. This is going to be the rate label and the rate entry. And let's call this a rate label. And the text here will be current conversion rate dot dot. And then we'll call this one rate entry. Okay. Now we still need a couple of buttons here. So ah, maybe we'll put those on there as well. So let's create a button frame. And I'm just going to call this button underscore frame. We're going to make this a frame. We want to put it in our currency frame. And then let's button underscore frame dot pack this guy. Give it a pad Y of 20 to push it down the screen a little bit. Now let's create buttons. We want a lock button and an unlock button. And I'll talk about these in just a second. But let's just call this one lock underscore button. And it's a button and we want to put it in our button frame and we want the text to say lock and we want to give this a command of lock as well, which we'll create in just a second. So let's go lock underscore button and we want to dot grid this guy. So let's go row equals zero column equals zero. And this also gives us a pad X of 10 to move it apart from the other button. And I'm just going to copy this and let's call this one unlock button. Here, let's say unlock and let's give it a command of unlock. Column will be one, we'll put it over one. So let's come up here real quickly and create these lock and unlock things. So let's define lock and let's just pass. And here we want to define unlock. And also let's just pass. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this. We did that pretty quick. Let's close this guy and run this again to make sure that looks okay. Python currency.py. 
And when we do, we see, okay, everything looks like it's the way we want it to. Okay, so now let's create this convert screen. So let me pull up the other one here, our finished product. Click over, actually we have to type stuff in. So let's go US dollar, Mexican peso, and I don't know, 20.3. Click lock, when we do this pops up, we'll finagle with that in a minute. Okay, so now we want a label frame and another label frame and a couple of entry boxes and a couple of buttons. So let's go ahead and build that out real quick. So let's call this, let's just copy this, come down here, paste this in, and let's call this conversion stuff, right? So we've got this amount here, so let's create an amount underscore label, and this is gonna be a label frame. We want to put it in our other frame here. So we've got our, our currency frame. We've also got our conversion frame. That's what this second one is here where we're converting, right? So let's put that in conversion frame. We want the text to equal amount to convert. And you'll notice up here it says amount of US dollars to convert to Mexican pesos. But right here, I just put amount to convert. So right off the bat, we'll just have it say amount to convert. And then when we fill out this form, we'll have this update automatically to whatever we type into these two fields, right? So that's how we'll do that. So let's go amount underscore label dot pack and let's give this guy a pad Y of like 20, push it down screen a little bit. Okay, we also need a, an entry box here. So let's go entry box for amount. And I'm gonna call this amount underscore entry. This is gonna be an entry box. We wanna put it in our amount label here. We just created. And let's give this a font equals, let's call this Helvetica. And once again, let's go 24 to make it nice and big. And let's go amount underscore entry dot pack. Give this a pad Y also of 10 and a pad X of 10. Give it a little space around there, so okay. Now let's do the uh, convert button. So here, let's call convert underscore button, set that equal to obviously a button. We want to put this in our amount label. We want the text to say, for now, just convert. And again, we'll update this to convert from US dollars since we typed in US dollar, right? We'll do that a little bit later. And let's give this a command of convert create in just a second. And so let's go convert underscore button dot pack, give this a pad Y also of like what, 20, push it down the screen. Okay, so let's come up here and define convert and we'll pass for now. Okay, what else do we need? We need this box here. So let's go equal equals frame, <laughs> I don't know, whatever. So we're converting here. So let's just call this a converted underscore label. And this is gonna be a label frame. We wanna put it in our conversion frame. And for now, we'll give this a text of, I don't know, converted currency. And again, it says something different here. We'll change it to you know, update based on what we fill out in this form. But for now, I could just say converted currency. All right, so let's go converted underscore label dot pack. And let's give this a pad Y of 20 as well. And now let's create a converted entry. So let's go converted underscore entry. This is gonna be an entry box. We wanna put it in our converted label. We wanna give this a font equal to Helvetica again. And also let's make this 24. Let's also give this a border of zero and a BG, a background equal to system button face. That will make it sort of disappear. So it doesn't look like there's a box here, but when there's a number, we can still highlight it and copy it, hit control C on our keyboard if we want. We talked about that probably in the last video or so. Uh, you can watch that if you didn't, if you don't know what I'm doing here, but it's just a way to make it look a little better. Whatever, <laughs> All right? So, okay, system button face for that. And let's go converted underscore entry dot back. Give this a pad Y of 10 and a pad X of 10. Let's give it a little bit of space here. Okay, looking good. Finally, let's do a clear button. So I'm gonna call this clear button and it's gonna be a button. We wanna put it in our conversion frame. 
So it's sort of by itself down there. We want the text to equal clear. We want the command to equal clear, which we haven't done yet. We'll make just a second. And finally, let's go clear underscore button dot pack. Give this a pad Y of 20 to push it down the screen. Okay. Then I'll just come up here really quickly and define clear and we'll pass. Uh, we can rough this out really quickly. We know these two boxes. So this one is called the amount entry. So we could just go amount entry dot delete. We want to go from zero to end. Do this again. The other one is, let's see, converted entry. So we could just do that. Okay, so let's go ahead and save this, run it, make sure this is looking okay. Let's close this other guy here. So Python currency dot pi. We come over here and you'll notice the screen has changed. Everything's scrunched in a little bit. That's because this now didn't take up all the width. So first, let's see if this works. Let's click clear. Okay, so that works. Now we sort of need to expand this a little, a little bit so it starts to look the way it used to look before we filled out this screen here. So we can do that just by creating sort of a fake label. So let's come down here and uh, fake label for spacing. So I'm just gonna call this spacer. It's gonna be a label. We wanna put it in our conversion frame here. I want the text to equal just nothing. And let's give this a width of like 68, 69, 70, somewhere around there should be enough to sort of space things out. So let's go spacer dot pack. We don't have to give this a pad Y at all. So let's save this and run this again to see if that looks a little better. Okay, so we've got our spacing back to normal now. Everything is stretched back out. This notebook is expanded out the way it used to. Okay, so everything's looking good. So now what do we need to do? We've got all of the gooey stuff done. Well, let's start out with creating a lock and unlock button. So when we click this button, we want to sort of freeze everything in place so that we can't change it, right? And then that will also trigger stuff over here to change. So this amount to convert will change to say, you know, convert from US dollars to Mexican pesos or whatever, based on what you typed into these boxes. So that's why we also need to make sure we type something into these boxes. And if we didn't, we need to put a little error message on the screen that says, hey, you didn't fill out one of these boxes and then not allow this screen to come up until that changes. So the first thing we could do is sort of disable this convert tab. So how do we do that? Well, let's come up here to the top where we defined our tabs and let's say uh, disable, disable second tab. And to do that, we just call my underscore notebook dot tab. And these are numbered. So the first tab is zero, the second tab is one. So we want to take that and what do we want to do? We want to change the state to disabled. All right, so if we save this, come back over here, run this guy again, we see now we can't click on this. It's disabled. You see it's sort of grayed out there. And then when we click on this, we'll make this pop back up. So we've got our lock function. So we can just take this right here and pass it in here and change this back to normal. All right, so if we save this and run it, we'll see. It's disabled when we click this, boom, it enables and we can click on it again. So that's not really what we want, but we're gonna wanna be able to do that later, so we've roughed that in. So, all right, so let's do an if statement. Let's go if not home underscore entry dot get and not the next one, conversion entry. So conversion entry dot get and not what's the last one rate entry. So if we haven't filled out these, so rate entry dot get, then what do we want to do? Well, let's pop up a message box. So let's go message box and let's go dot show warning and let's go warning. <laughs> I don't know you didn't fill out all the fields. Else, let's do this. Okay, so let's save this and run it, see if that worked. So we didn't fill out these fields, click this. Hey, you didn't fill out all the fields, click okay. So let's, maybe we fill out one of them, click it again. Oh, it doesn't work. So what did I do? Oh. <laughs> 
not and, we need or. So if not this or that or that. So if not any of those, throw up a message. So, okay, let's run the skin. Try it one more time. So we didn't fill out any of them. We get a message. Maybe we fill out one of them. We still get the message. Okay, we fill out the next one. We still get the message. You know, this is the convert tab is still not enabled. All right, fill out the last one. Boom, this pops back up. Okay, so that's the one thing we wanna do, this thing to pop up after these things have been filled out. We also wanna lock these. So I'm gonna disable each of these fields when we click the lock button. So we can do that real easy. Here we just wanna go, this is home underscore entry dot config. We wanna set the state equal to disabled. And let me just copy this. And let's say uh, disable entry boxes. And then let's say enable tab. So this was home entry. What were the other ones? Conversion entry. And then rate entry, right? Okay, so we save this, run it, make sure that looks okay. So we do this, we do this, we do this, we click this, all of these get grayed out, and this one gets enabled. If we wanna unlock these, let's do that. So let's just do the opposite. So I'm gonna just copy these. And so for our unlock, instead of disabled, we want this to be normal. So we could just do this, and instead of disable, let's enable. <laughs> okay, so save this and run it. We're getting there, almost done here. So this, 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 we will lock it. Everything's locked, we unlock, that's back. Maybe we wanna disable this when we unlock this, maybe not. Yeah, we probably do, right? So let's do that real quick. So let's grab this and let's say disable tab. And instead of normal, we want this to be disabled. There we go, so let's save this, run it one more time, make sure that worked. So boom, 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 lock, everything's locked. This is unlocked. Now when we unlock this, these are unlocked and this goes back to being locked. I'm clicking it, you can't click on it. You can see it's grayed out. Okay, so that works. So now let's take whatever we enter into these fields and put it up here. So instead of it saying amount to convert, let's say amount of your home currency that you typed in to convert and same thing down here. So to do that, we just need the the names of these boxes. So that was amount entry and converted entry. So let's bring this back up to lock and let's uh, change tab fields. So that was amount entry and what was the other one? Converted entry. No, no, we want the labels, right? So let's see. Yeah, so we want the amount label and the converted label. So that's the amount label and the converted underscore label. So we wanna dot config these and set the text equal to, and let's use an F string here. So we can go say amount of, and then this is gonna be home underscore entry dot get to convert to, and this is gonna be what? Conversion underscore entry dot get. All right, so that looks good. This one will be dot config also. We wanna set the text equal. Now let's make this an F string two. And let's say equals this many, and this is gonna be conversion underscore entry dot get. And we also had a, a button down here too, didn't we? Uh, let's see. That was a clear button, no, convert button. There it is, yeah, convert button. Let's change that as well up here while we're at it. So that was convert button dot config. And we'll set the text of that equal also to an F string. And let's say convert from, and this is gonna be home entry dot get. Okay, so let's save this and run it, see if that looks good. So let's type in US dollar, we wanna to convert to Mexican peso, 
I don't know, 24 point something. We click lock, it locks them here. Here it says amount of US dollar to convert to Mexican peso. Here it says equals this many Mexican pesos. Our button now says convert from US dollar. Okay, so, so far so good. Now we just have to do the math, right? So we need to play with this button here. So let's head back over here and let's see, come down to the bottom where that button is. So convert button, let's see, we created a command called convert. Have we created that yet? Yeah, but we haven't just passed. So we've got this converted entry. So let's go ahead and delete if there's anything in there right now. Let's say uh, clear converted entry box if it exists. So converted entry dot delete from zero to end, right? So now let's convert. So let's create a, ver a variable called conversion. And we want to set that equal to our rate underscore entry dot get times our amount underscore entry dot get. So this amount entry is the box we're filling out. We're saying, hey, convert a thousand US dollars. How many is that? That's amount entry. Amount entry is a thousand. This rate entry is back from the first page when we typed in the conversion rate. So let's see, that's this guy right here, rate entry. We just want to multiply them. Now, these are both numbers. And when we enter them into entry boxes, they're sort of strings by default. And these could be integers, they could be decimal numbers. So let's wrap these in a float. Float is decimal numbers. So even if they're not, we might, we probably need to convert them into a float anyway, right? So now down here, our converted entry, we can just sort of update that with this. So let's go update entry box. So converted entry dot insert. We want to insert in the position zero. What do we want to insert? Conversion. Now we're going to need to do some work on this, but let's just save this and run it to see if it works basically for now. So let's go US dollar, Mexican peso. What's the current conversion rate? Now, like I said, you could create, a, you could go find an API that you could connect to to get the current rates of these things. And this video is getting really long already, so we're not going to do that in this video. Instead, I'm just going to point you over to Google. And I just typed in US to peso. And you can see this thing pops up. And we can see currently one US dollar is 20.72 pesos. So we could just grab that 20.72 and just sort of paste it right there, right? When we lock this, that becomes our current conversion rate, one to 20.72. So now we can come over here and say we want 10 of these, or let's just say we want one. We click this, it's 20.72. Now look at this, if we click 10, we get 207.2. .2. If we go 100, we go 207.0, 1,000, 10,000. It seems to be doing okay. But now here, look, we're getting 0 0.039998. So we wanna convert this to just two decimal places. So let's do that real quick. So let's come back over here and for our conversion, let's go uh, convert to two decimals. So I'm gonna go conversion equals, and we just wanna round here. So let's go round, use the round function, and we wanna round conversion to two decimal places, right? So, okay, that should work. Let's save that and run it to make sure that looks good. So USD, me X, 20 point, what was it, 7.2? We lock this, boom, come back over here. What was it seven, did that throw it off? All right, so now it's 04. Okay, so that looks good. So it's converted, it's rounding to, do, to two decimal spots. Now we also might want commas in here because this is kind of hard to read. Is it 207,000, is it 2 million? We can't really tell, commas really help. So let's add some commas in here. We can do that by coming down here and let's add commas. So let's go conversion equals, and here we can use a format. So let's use squiggly brackets and we can go colon, comma, and then we can go dot format. And what do we want to format? We want to format our conversion. All right, so let's go ahead and save that. That should do the trick there. So let's go USD, MEX, 
20.72, whatever. Block this guy. Come back over here. We want to convert 10,000 of these. Boom, 207,200. We put in even more, 2 million. 72. We got nice commas. We got nice decimals. Maybe you want to put a dollar sign in front of that. You can do that. Clear the screen. That works as well. So why not? Let's do that. <laughs> so when we insert it into the entry box, we can use an F string, put a dollar sign, wrap this in brackets. There we go. Save this. Run it one more time. So USD MEX 20.72 lock. Invert. I don't know. We've got a nice dollar sign equals this many MEX. So, so let's play around with this. One hundred thousand US dollars equals two million seventy-two thousand Mexican pesos right now. So very cool. So a fun little app. You know, not too difficult. Again, we're not connecting to an API because this video is getting very long. We don't have time to do that. And I've done lots of videos on connecting to APIs. You can do a Google search to find a bunch of different free current currency APIs that you could connect to if you really wanted to make this super special. But uh, yeah, just a fun little app shows us how to make tabs disabled and, is, and enabled, how to sort of gray these out. We can unlock here and now this conversion thing doesn't work anymore. If we try and lock it again, uh oh, we get a message. You forgot to fill this out. It's USD or US, or whatever. Now when we click this, it works. We can come back here, do our stuff and very cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off memberships. They pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.